Hi, this is Joe from TechBits, here to show you another video of some Windows tips. What I'd like to show you today is how to make your Windows PC a bit more secure by using a second user on your PC as a standard user. The way we do that, we can go down here and it can either go through settings or just type accounts to get there. And we can add, edit, or remove other users. Here's our account settings. Now you notice down here, my one user on this machine here is an administrator and a local account which means the local account means it's not logged on to Microsoft. I like more control over my accounts. I don't want Microsoft uh, managing my account. In any case with the administrator user you leave yourself open to a lot of problems because uh, the administrator is the only one that can uh, install software uh, on your computer and it makes it a lot easier for some virus to install software if you're running on your user account. Not saying it can't happen with the standard account, but it make, will make it a lot safer. Also, if you want to add a family member or anyone else as a user on your system, you can give them their own user and they won't interfere with your user. You can add a family member, but I believe you have to have a Microsoft account for whoever you add. There's a learn more button here. Let's see where that takes us. If you click on that, you can find out more about a family group and you can set up different times for your different family members to get on the internet or not. Um, you'll have to check more on this on this site here, but uh, if you have children, it's very good. You can keep track of what they're doing. But in any case, that's how to add a family member. If you want to add anyone else, you can go here to add someone else. Now you don't, you can put an email or phone number if you'd like, but I prefer, it's going to be for me, it's going to be a secondary account. So I don't want to put an email or phone. So I will just say I don't have this person's sign-in information. And click Next. And we don't want to use again, as I mentioned, an email or phone. So I'm going to say add a user without a Microsoft account. And I'll give it a name. User. Now if you'd wanted to make it, make it real secure, you can add a password, which would work. Uh, let's just add a password. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll enter the password. One, two, three, four, five. And once you put a password in, there's some security security questions you need to answer. What's your pet's first name? You can pick any of these, but let's say uh, Joe. Okay, what's well, the second security question? What's your childhood nickname? Hmm. Joe. 
obviously I'm just putting Joe in for all these. What's the name of your oldest cousin? First name of your oldest cousin? Joe. Next. Now we have a user set up with a local account, but you notice it doesn't say administrator. So this new user, if we look here, has a standard user account. If we wanted to change that, we could do that here. But since I don't want my second user to have administrator, I'm just going to leave it like that. And we can see here, if we look at the start button, the Windows icon, look here at the users, click on this and see we have a new user called user and we know it, it is a, a standard user with no administrative privileges. I decided to switch over to my laptop because I couldn't screen capture everything I wanted to uh, on just the one PC. So I'm sending this over an HDMI to this, my main PC, my desktop, from my laptop. Okay, so we set up a user called user. So if we go here to my main user, we go to user. Now, when I sign into user, since it's the first time on this new user, Windows has to go through and set up a few things on the desktop. This is the reason I, I couldn't capture this on my on the single PC for some reason, I guess because it's not part of, uh, really part of Windows. And this is the screen. I didn't want it, you to be surprised by this or whatever, but this is the screen. It's going to pop up and set your privacy settings. My recommendation is to turn everything off. Just like that. And hit next. And now here we are in our new user. So if you look here on the start button and click user, here's our user. Okay, the next step, I wanted to show you the one the one uh, security thing that is important. If you click here, if you right click on the start button and go to apps, apps and features. If you wanted to, let's see, we'll, we'll pick a, pick a program here, an app, and I'm going to left click on it. And you can see there's an uninstall button. And it's going to tell me that the app installs, uh, it'll get rid of some other things on there. So we'll click that again. It said it'll delete related info. So let's just say, okay, we don't care about the related info. But here's what happens when you're on a local user with no administrative privileges. You're going to get a screen that pops up asking for the password of the administrator on this on this PC. Without that, of course I know the password because I'm the same person and I'm just using this as an extra security measure. 
but if someone on here was using your PC, you gave them a, a user to, to use, and you didn't want them adding or subtracting any programs, installing or uninstalling, then you can stop it this way. They'd have to come to you for a password or know the password. So I'm going to say no to that. Also, we'll close this. Now, suppose we have a program we'd like to install on our local user, our standard user. Well, I have one set up here that I just picked as an example. This audio converter. I'm going to download it. And let's see if it finished downloading. It has. And we'll go to the folder. And I'll double click to run the program. Immediately, when it goes to install, it pops up this window. And again, down at the lower part of the window, it's asking for a password. It says to continue, enter an, an admin user name and password. So you have to have administrator privileges to install that. So if you have a person using a, an extra user on your PC and they want to install this, they're going to have to come to you with a password or have you installed on your, your user so they could use it on theirs. Now we're back to our desktop. And we're all set to go. We have our new standard user that we should probably use most of the time just to avoid having some virus or hacker get in without the password and change uh, or install things. I'm back on my main Joe's Tech Bits screen, and I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, you can give me a like, give me some comments. If you don't like it, comment also. Let me know what I could have done better or what else you'd like to see. I'm sure there's a lot of things that you'd like to see that I haven't done yet. So until the next video, have a great day, a great week, a great weekend, or whatever, and we'll see you again on the next video. Bye!